In this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the equation of a tangent plane to a surface around a point. So let's have a surface, and I'm going to change the color just that, so that you can visualize it a little better. So let's make it blue. So let's have a surface, right? And uh, that surface is going to be represented by some function of two variables, x and y. So let's have the x-axis here. x-axis here, y-axis and z-axis. Now we're going to have this surface, so this is going to be represented by f of x, y. And we usually, for, for these functions, we just call it z equals to that, just in the same way so that for one variable we call y a function of x and so on. So that's what we're going to have. And let's say that we wanted to find the tangent plane. So remember, we've, we've singled the derivatives of a curve. We find the tangent line at a point by getting the derivative at that point. And here, we, in the analogous we have a function of two variables, what we're going to do is we're going to get a tangent plane at that point. So that tangent plane is going to be like this. And we're going to call this point z naught or simply x naught y naught. So that's going to be our point. Now how do we find that using partial derivatives? Well, the, the equation of a plane is usually written as ax plus by plus cz plus d equals to zero, where all a, b, c, and d are constants, and or sometimes it might be written in terms of x, so as a function of z, so we may have ax plus by plus some other constant c, and d is just contained within those constants because we, we want to have isolate that z value. So there are two ways of writing that, so how do we find it? Well, the, the main idea behind using partial derivatives is that we can write the equation of tangent plane as follows. So we get the, the initial point, so that's the point evaluated uh, at x0 and y0. And we're going to add to that the following partial derivatives. So we're going to have partial set with respect to x evaluated at the point x0, y0. And we use this straight bar with this point here, just to denote that we're going to take the partial derivative, but we're going to input these values to evaluate the numerical value of that partial derivative, times x minus x naught, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, at the point x naught, y naught, and y times y minus y naught. So let's apply this to a simple example. Let's have the let's have the function y equals to natural log of two x plus y, and let's say we want to find the equation of the tangent plane at the point at the point minus one three. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate set naught, which is just going to be this point evaluated. So that's going to be natural log of minus two plus three which is ln1, and we know this is equal to 0. Now, next thing is going to be find the partial derivatives of the values. So, set with respect to x, that's going to be what? That's going to be 2 over 2x plus y. And we are, this is just using the rule of differentiation for logarithmic functions that we learned in the previous video. And we're going to do with respect to y, so that's going to be 1 over 2x plus y. And now the next thing is, of course, evaluate the, the values of those derivatives at the point minus 1, 3. So we're going to have this set dx at the point minus 1, 3. So this is going to be 2 over minus 2 plus 3, which is just 2. And then partial derivative of, of y evaluated at minus 1, 3. That's going to be equal to 1 over minus 2 plus 3 that's going to be 1. And now all we do is we plug in all these values into this equation and that's going to give us the equation of the tangent plane. It's going to give us the equation of the tangent plane. So this is going to be z equals to z naught, so that's 0, plus 2 times x minus x naught, so that's minus 1, so that becomes plus 1. And then on this side we're going to have plus 1 times y minus y naught, which is 3. 
and then if, if we expand this out we're going to get 2x plus y minus 1 so that's going to be our equation for the tangent plane at that point so that that's just just to show you some of the geometrical applications of partial derivatives and this is just a really nice way of visualizing what the what the rate of change in each in each direction is at that point because remember when we have a surface you're going to have a rate of change that is different along each of these axes x and y so obviously the the orientation of this tangent plane is sort of going to tell you what how the function is changing in each of those directions or or, or an average of how it is changing now there are other methods that we will explore that tells us um, a little bit more information about the direction of change of those um, in those two directions but for now this is just one of the really nice ways that you can visualize it and just to show you another example let's have a simpler function I'm just gonna get rid of all this So let's have the function set equals to x squared plus y squared. So this is analogous to a parabola in one dimension. So it is actually called a paraboloid. So we're going to have x, y, and z. And it looks something like this. So it's a little bit hard to draw on a board because obviously we're talking about a three-dimensional shape. So it is, a, it is a shape that essentially goes to infinity. But I'm just drawing a little cutout section, so it looks like this. It's called a paraboloid because it's a, like a parabola but in three dimensions. So it's going to have this kind of shape. And then it's just hollow in the middle, so that's what the paraboloid is. And let's say we want to find the tangent plane at the point zero, zero. So you know that for a parabola that is centered at the origin, the tangent line at the origin is just going to be horizontal, which means that the, the line is just going to be represented by y equals to 0. So we should expect this, that since this parabola is centered at the origin, that the tangent plane at that point should be completely horizontal, and it should be defined by z equals to 0. So let's, say, let's see if that is actually true by applying the equation we just used. So let's find z0, so that's at the point 0, 0. So that's obviously going to be 0, and then we're going to have partial derivative x, that's going to be 2x, y, that's going to be 2y, and then if we evaluate each of these at the point at the origin, that's going to be 0 and 0, such that the equation of the tangent plane is just going to be zero in the end. So that's just a visual representation of what we had here. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what's happening here. And this is with respect to functions of two variables. Obviously th this cannot be visualized with functions of three variables because what we would be looking at is just a projection of, of the actual function in R4. But hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you can uh, treat surfaces and how can you can find tangent planes at specific points. And in the next video, we're going to continue with applications of partial derivatives and we're going to talk about the total differential.